Um, section 6-2, um, example 4. So we're simplifying logs. Um, our calculator won't find this value for us, so we're going to use some of the properties we learned. Um, so we have log base 2, and then we have parentheses 2 squared plus 2 squared. So before I can do anything, I'm probably going to simplify what's going on inside. 2 squared plus 2 squared. So I get log base 2. Um, you could add them up, like find them. 4 plus 4 is 8. Or something you might notice is 2 times 2 squared, because there's two of them. Another option. Which leads me to 2 cubed it's 2 to the 1 times 2 squared and I still get 8 either way um, the reason I like it in this format 2 cubed is we learn that when these match the bases match they just cancel out and we get 3 otherwise right many of you probably did this instead you found 8 so then 2 to what power is 8 and that would be 3 so you just get 3 so logs kind of have more than one way of looking at them. Um, it's kind of nice to make the bases match and just make things cancel. Or you can use the arrow method and solve for the power. All right, let's find domain. We haven't done domain of logs yet. So let's find the domain of ln of x squared plus 3x. So we recently learned that we can only input positive numbers. So that means um, we learned the domain was 0 to infinity, which means that whole inner function needs to be greater than 0. You can try on your calculator. If you do ln of negative 5, it doesn't work. ln of 0 doesn't work. Um, we have a nonlinear inequality. We haven't done this in a while. But these are really important in calculus, so I'm glad we get to review them. So don't move anything, we're going to factor instead. So x times x plus 3 greater than 0. And then we're going to go ahead and mark those critical points. So we get 0 and we get negative 3 on the number line. And then we're going to go ahead and do those test intervals. So we'll plug into x, we'll plug into x plus 3, and then we'll plug into x times x plus 3. So we did this really early in the semester. Hopefully it's coming back to you. So I'll try negative four. So negative four into x gives me a negative. Negative four plus three is negative. So you combine them and it's positive. Let's try negative one in the next interval. So negative one is negative. Negative one plus three is positive. Combine them and you get a negative. This is way back in chapter one if you need to review. And then we'll try one in that last interval. So one is positive. One plus three is positive. Combine them and it's positive. And then since we're looking for greater than zero, we want the positive intervals. So my domain will be negative infinity to negative three and zero to infinity. So these are all the numbers we're allowed to plug in. So let's try a couple log laws. So logs have special properties. So if I have a product within a log, I can actually split it up by addition. So this is true for any base as long as it's greater than zero and not one. Bases will always be greater than zero and not one. And m and n are positive. It's basically the opposite of the exponent rules. Um, if we have b to the x times b to the y, we can add the powers. And then same with division, right? b to the x over b to the y, we subtract powers. So it's a similar concept. So when I have division inside of a log, I can separate them by subtraction. And then the final property is probably the most useful, is if I have log base b of m to a power, 
you can actually bring the power out front and it's no longer a power. So that will be the most useful one. So let's go ahead and rewrite this example six as a single log. Um, sometimes it's just more useful as a log, as a single one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these three properties to do that. So I can't combine them if they have coefficients. So to get rid of coefficients, I'm gonna use the power property and bring them inside. So instead of two times ln of x plus two, it'll be ln of x plus two squared. And then instead of three ln x minus one, we get minus ln of x minus one to the third power, and then the plus ln x squared is fine so far. So we're using that power property. And now we can combine them using addition and subtraction. So anything that's division or subtraction, anything that's subtraction becomes division. So when I make this a single log, we get ln of x plus two squared. We're gonna divide by x minus one cubed because that's subtraction and then multiply by the x squared. And now we have a single ln.